is actually something I pose as a problem to my students every year, and I always uh, laugh at them for uh, messing it up because it's really difficult. But the task is uh, 20 slides, 15 seconds per slide, and the computer does the forwarding. So there's a. I thought that I would be able to prepare this in a, a few hours before uh, today. I don't usually use a manuscript, but uh, today we have one. <coughs> so yeah, it's really difficult. So so I hope lots of failure. Already behind, Already behind schedule. <laughs> and now I know that my computer is at risk, so we uh, have a terrible time. All right, so thanks for having me. Basically, I'll talk about work I do in collaboration with lots of people here at DTU Compute. And my goal is to understand how social system works on large scales. And I'm going to talk about how we use smartphones to study that. So my background has to do with studying the common properties across networks, sort of from cell regulation all the way up to the internet scale. And when I started studying these things in around 2000, we thought that we could describe them as just random networks, uh, random connections, and it turned out that was really wrong. What we found basically was structure at every level. Uh, for single nodes, we found power law distributions of uh, their neighbors, number of neighbors. For small motifs of just a few nodes, we find some are down-regulated and some are up-regulated, much more than we'd think. My own work has sort of focused on the next levels, how these uh, motifs form communities of densely connected nodes uh, that are weakly connected to the rest of the, the network, and the hierarchy sort of organizes everything. Now, concurrently with these developments, we've also seen great developments in studying uh, human mobility. So based on access to big data, we can now uh, basically, from cell phones, we can study the dynamics of entire nations. And what we're finding is kind of remarkable. For example, this paper has shown that given a uh, past history of locations, we can predict correctly 93% of the time the next location in the, in the time series. So what that means is that there's a lot of regularity in mo our mobility patterns. Now, even more generally, network science, human mobility, is part of an even larger uh, field that we call computational social science. And that's where we basically try and take into account these... Uh-oh. <coughs> Sorry. The computer was uh, dying. Um, uh, yeah. There you go. So anyway, the thing that throughout all this frustrated me I, this is a joke here, yep, uh, was that I often saw these high-impact paper claiming deep insights into how social systems work based on just Facebook data alone. And so why is this uh, a problem? Well, basically because it's wrong, right? So the reason it's wrong is because we communicate on many different channels. We talk face-to-face -face like we do now, we communicate via email, via online social networks, we talk on the phone, and all the while we move around in physical space. Now, the key to all this is sort of the modern smartphone. So the phone knows where it is. We use it to access email. We use it to access Twitter and Facebook. And even sometimes, we will use it to make phone calls. So now, in order to sort of create a fantastic new data set to remedy some of these problems, next semester, we're handing out special cell phones to all freshmen at DTU. Um, and we're doing this in collaboration with a bunch of uh, social science guys from University of Copenhagen. So on a plot of the number of users versus the number of bits collected per user, we can kind of think of darker colors as expressing the density of previous studies. So up along the y-axis, we have the traditional social science. You send a guy out, he looks at some people for a year, collects a lot of information. Along the x-axis, we have sort of these large nation-spanning cell phone studies, millions of users, only a little bit of information from each user. Now, what we want to do is to create a study that's not just 10% greater than last time, but 10 times greater, and kind of try and move out in this gray area and step boldly where no one has uh, stepped before. OK, so right now, we're just starting. We've successfully run a 200-person uh, version of this study since the fall last year. And for these last few slides, I am going to talk about sort of the foundational stuff that we've worked on so far. And if you want to hear about the long-term plans, you can find me uh, after the talk. No time for those. So this is just to show you sort of the raw data. Here's a great up map of Copenhagen. In a minute, some of our GPS data is going to be on there. And just so you kind of 
can be aware, basically every red dot is an observation, and you can see that the map just comes out of the observation. And this is just one of the channels we're looking at. Um, one of the very basic things that we've been spending a lot of time on so far is just building the database that will handle all this, these massive uh, sizes of data, also doing it safely. Uh, apparently that's wrong, according to the last talk. Um, and and uh, respecting privacy and also showing the data back to the students. And what we're also beginning to do is to gauge sort of how to even interpret the data that comes out of all these phones, basic research, uh, sampling according to sort of other researchers, and of course with all the guys at Coxus, uh, we're also starting to do uh, lots of machine learning on these data sets. And finally, just to return to privacy, a central strain in our research is that we want to do this in a responsible way and sort of take all that we're doing uh, into the future, you know, uh, with responsibility and, and doing those things right also. That's it, guys. Wow.